to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim the news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the word of god says have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness rather expose them we welcome you today to our study of answering denominational doctrines today we're going to be considering the doctrines and teachings of the jehovah witness organization and friend as we do this please understand we realize there are good hard-working kind good moral people in many of these religious groups we're not talking about that we're asking do their teachings line up with what's correct and true according to the Word of God and so we're glad you joined us today we hope that you'll find your Bible have it handy as we're going to present information that we want you to compare with the Word of God as always we're so glad that you joined us for our study together today Today's lessons are being brought to you by uh, loving members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly, whether it be on Sunday or Wednesday, they'd be happy to have you. There are people in the Lord's Church who love God, love lost souls, and are simply concerned about what does the Bible say. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, that's our only concern as well. We want to know what does God say and how can we help men and women go to heaven? We want to encourage you to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a host of good Bible study material located there. We've got DVDs, CDs, audio and digital, audio and video downloads digitally, as well as written information, and it's all free. It doesn't cost you a dime. Go to our website, and we'll even send it to you free of charge as well. We also want to encourage you to download our app from the Android or uh, play, uh, Apple Store. Uh, the Gospel of Christ app is a great way to listen to some of our lessons or material or learn and study on the go as well. And so we hope you'll do just that. As we think about the doctrines of the Jehovah Witness organization, a big part of understanding their doctrine is to understand its origin. And much of the doctrine of the Jehovah Witness organization is going to come from a couple of people that they revere as prophets. And so we want to ask, does the evidence actually show that these men are true prophets of God? Hey, if, if it does, let's accept them as a prophet. If we can look at the evidence and it doesn't, well, friend, the whole thing goes out. All the teachings they said go out as well because God clearly teaches a prophet cannot speak out of both sides of his mouth. Now, let's set the precedent for understanding this. This comes from the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 18. I want you to listen to what God says about a prophet in verse number 22. I'm going to put it on the screen. Deuteronomy 18 verse 22. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. And so basically God sets a litmus test here. If someone says I'm a prophet, how do you know they're really a prophet? Well, when they tell you something and it doesn't happen, you can know they were saying it on their own, not from me, God said. What about some of the alleged prophets? or the Jehovah Witness organization. One who is highly revered is a man by the name of Charles Taze Russell. Let's put his prophecies, or some of them, to the test, the litmus test of Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. Is he really a prophet of God? If so, what he says had to come to pass, right? Let me give you some examples. In the Jehovah Witnesses organization by Maurice Printing, uh, page number 36, here's what is said uh, about Russell. Russell published a book uh, entitled Jehovah Witnesses in a book claiming that Christ's second advent or coming had begun invisibly in the fall of 1874. 
Russell later claimed in 1889, in the coming 26 years, all present governments would be overthrown and dissolved. Again, the Jehovah Witnesses and their prophetic speculation, uh, page 83 through 84, documents this quote. In 1914, Russell later said, Armageddon may begin next spring. Millions living now will die, uh, page 88 through 90, of course multiple information quoted there. And then he later goes on to say, in view of the strong Bible evidence concerning the times of the Gentiles, we consider it an established truth that the final end of the kingdom of this world and the full establishment of the kingdom of God will be accomplished by the end of 1914. That's quoted in The Time is at Hand by Charles Taze Russell, 1902 edition, page number 99. Well, how many of those things happen? Did Jesus come invisibly in 1874? Friend, as I read my Bible, as anyone reads the Scripture, and you read 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, there is no invisibility to the Lord's coming. It will be with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead will rise. Friend, it is one of the loudest events the Bible describes, not an invisible event. And of course, it didn't happen in 1874. Well, in, from 1889 to the future 26 years, Re Taze Russell said that all governments will be overthrown. Well, did that happen? Well, no, not even the government he was living under. It wasn't overthrown. Armageddon's going to happen in 1914. Didn't happen. All kings in this world are going to become the kingdom. No, 1914 just didn't happen. Now, friend, why quote these documented prophecies of Charles Taze Russell? Friend, simply to show you, to see ourselves, that his prophecies do not meet the litmus test of Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. God said if a prophet prophesies something in my name, claims to be a prophet of God, and it doesn't happen, you can know he's not a prophet of God. Friend, from these cited and documented evidences, we can know Charles Taze Russell, one of the original prophets and founders of the Jehovah Witness organization, was not a prophet of God. There is then another man who is often revered and looked up to as a prophet. Uh, his name is J.F. Rutherford, often referred to as Judge Rutherford. Well, let's see if he also meets the litmus test of Deuteronomy 18, verse 22. In 1920, J.F. Rutherford predicted the resurrection of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and other faithful ones of old, fully restored to perfect humanity. This was going to take place, he said, in 1925. This is Jehovah Witnesses and prophetic speculation quoted on page number 88. Friend, did that happen? Is it the case, is it the case that, uh, that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and other faithful people came back to life in 1925? Well, no, there's absolutely no evidence of that anywhere. That just didn't happen. And yet he prophesied that it would. The year 1940, he would la later go on to say, is certain to be the most important year, yet because Armageddon is very near, he said, it behooves all who love righteousness to put forth every effort to advertise, advertise the theocracy while the privileges are still open. And see, here we've got Judge Rutherford saying Armageddon's very near in 1940. And yet, friend, here we are in 2019 and it didn't happen now again we don't we have nothing personal against charles taze russell we have nothing personal against judge rutherford and yet we see from this evidence from their prophecies and what deuteronomy 18 22 says in all kindness friend their prophecies didn't come true the bible says if they claim to be a prophet and their prophecies don't come true god says they're not speaking for me they were not speaking on behalf of God, and they were not prophets of God. They were trying to dupe people into believing uh, fantastic ideas that came from their own mind. But what about the, uh, the Jehovah Witness book? What about the, what's claimed to be the Jehovah Witness Bible or translation? The New World Translation, and I find this very interesting. It's often the case that when a new religious group will arise, often that group is challenged by what the actual Bible says, and on multiple accounts, they will 
come up with their new translation where the Bible is actually not translated right and you need our translation because it's better than the Bible. Well, friend, that's kind of a cop out to begin with, but let's examine that New World Translation and see if it's actually a, a good, reputable translation. Friend, there are very few, the majority, the big majority of Greek and Hebrew scholars do not endorse the New World Translation as reputable. And I think you'll find some, maybe who will say on occasion that it is, but the vast majority do not recognize that as reputable. In fact, David Reed, who was at one time a Jehovah Witness said, during the 1950s, watchtower leaders went beyond interpretation by, inter by producing their own version of the Bible, with hundreds of verses changed to fit watchtower doctrine. And their New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, listen to this, continues to be rewritten every few years, with additional changes made to bring God's Word in closer agreement with what the organization teaches. And of course, that's in Jehovah Witness Answered, verse by verse, page 17 and 18, by David Reed himself. And so, uh, oftentimes, it has to be updated and changed, not, not to make it more accurate to the original, but to bring it in line with their teaching. Concerning their translation, Anthony Hokima, in the four major cults, mentions this. He says, their New World Translation is by no means an objective rendering of the sacred text into modern English, but is a biased translation in which many of the peculiar teachings of the Watchtower Society, listen to this, are smuggled into the text of the Bible itself. Now, we give you an example of that. John 1 verse 1, In the beginning was the Word. This is what the Bible says. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Well, Jehovah Witness doctrine doesn't teach Jesus being the same as God. That he's, not, he's a God, He's not God per se. So, New World Translation of John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, listen to this little change now, the Word was a God. Wait a minute now. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was equivalent, was God. Big change smuggled in there, and that's exactly what these um, uh, people who've studied Greek are telling us. For example, Bruce Metzger, highly recognized professor of New Testament history and, and language at Princeton University, said this. He called the New World Translation a frightful mistranslation. He said it is erroneous, pernicious, reprehensible. If the Jehovah Witness take this translation seriously, he says they are polytheists. That's quoted by Julius Manti in Depth Exploration in the New Testament, page 136 and 137. Now you listen to that, erroneous, reprehensible, and if you take it seriously as bringing the sacred text into English, it makes you a polytheist in multiple places, that can be proved so. Dr. Julius Manti also says this concerning the New World Translation. He says, I've never read any New Testament so badly translated as the kingdom interlinear translation of the Greek Scriptures. It is a distortion of the New Testament. The translators used what J.B. Rotherham had translated in 1893 in modern speech and changed readings in scores of passages to state what Jehovah Witnesses believe and teach. This is a distortion, not a translation. Now again, friend, we're not being unkind, we're not being mean, we're not make, making fun of those who, uh, at all who may have been a part of it. We're simply saying the scholars, the evidence, the, anyone who studies the Greek can see that shouldn't be translated that way. That's just not correct with what we know to be true. And so consider that the Book of Mormon is a very spurious account anyway, and they have put a lot of their own teachings, or the Book of the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, their translation is a very spurious account and contains multiple uh, of their teachings they have smuggled in. Now, let's then turn our attention, though, to some of the various doctrines of the Jehovah Witness themselves. What do they teach? What does the Jehovah Witness organization teach concerning the Bible 
as the final authority from God, as being God's will for mankind today. Charles Taze Russell made this comment concerning the Scriptures and the Watchtower, September the 15th, 1910, on page number 298. Charles Taze Russell said this, Not only do we find that people cannot see the divine plan in studying the Bible by itself, but we see also that if anyone lays the Scripture studies, that's his book, aside, even after he has used them, after he has become familiar with them, after he's read them for 10 years, if he lays them aside and ignores them and goes to the Bible alone, though he has understood, understood the Bible for 10 years, our experience shows within two years he goes into darkness. On the other hand, if he'd merely read the Scripture studies, that is Charles Taze Russell's commentary basically on the Bible, with their references and had not read a page of the Bible as such, he would be in the light at the end of two years because he would have the light of the Scriptures. Wait a minute now. Charles Taze Russell says, if you lay my book aside, you lay my commentary, my interpretation aside, and you try to read the Bible, in just a short time, you're going to go into complete darkness. But if you'll keep my book open, read my references and what I've put in there, you'll understand the Scriptures. In essence, God's Word is not understandable and the only authority and really not what we need to read. Well, friend, the Bible, again, teaches the exact opposite of that. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for teaching, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Listen now, talking about the Bible, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped unto every good work. Well, Mr. Charles T. Hayes Russell, I, I hate to tell you this, but friend, God says I don't need Scripture studies along with the Bible to understand it. The Bible tells me I can understand it as I read it. And then there are other doctrines that we must consider. Uh, one of the more popular ones is concerning death as annihilation, basically meaning Jehovah Witness doctrine teaches that when a person dies outside of Christ, they are simply annihilated and they cease to exist. For example, Judge Rutherford said in Reconciliation, page number 296, when a man dies, he is as dead as a dog. Well, is that what the Bible says? Is that actually what the Bible teaches? Well, friend, on multiple accounts, we know that that's not true. Uh, John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he will never really die. John 5, 28 and 29, listen to this now, talking about saved and unsaved. John 5, 28 and 29, when the Lord comes, all are in the grave will one day come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life, those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Wait a minute now. Jesus said they weren't dead like a dog. They were going to come back. They were not annihilated. They did not cease to exist. The Bible teaches they're in a place called the Hadean realm, Luke 16, verse 19 following. And the Bible teaches that one day all men will give an account of themselves and that death is not an annihilation. Again, that's just not what we find in the Scriptures. Now, here's another one to consider. Concerning, many times we talk to Jehovah Witness and some may come to the door and say, have a tract or a pamphlet in their hand and they'll say, are you a part of the 144,000? And, you know, we think, well, what's the 144? What are you talking about here? And their idea is, are you a part of that special number, the 144,000, that are the only people who are ever going to be saved? You're not a part of that. You need to be. My well, friend, their idea is that the church is to have exactly 144,000 people in it and no more. This is quoted by Judge Rutherford in his document Deliverance on page number 324. My well, friend, let's think about this for just a moment. If I take the Bible literally about the 144,000, have you really thought about what it says concerning those? Think about And this would not fare well for many Jehovah Witnesses. According to the book of Revelation, where the 144,000 are found, those 144,000 come from the 12 tribes of Israel, meaning they're Jews only. 
Revelation 7 verse 4. According to the book of Revelation, where we find the 144,000, they are males only, according to Revelation 14, verse 4, and according to the book of Revelation, uh, according to Revelation 14, verse 4, they're virgins only. And so next time one of them comes to the door, maybe a man and a woman, maybe two women, might ask them, well, the book of Revelation says they're Jews, men, and virgins only. You don't fit that. Well, friend, that's because that's not taken literally. The Bible does not teach that there's only 144,000, literally, who are ever going to be in the church. That is a number representative of all the saved of all time. And so uh, they're not on, males only, they're not virgins only, and they're not Jews only. I don't know many Jehovah Witnesses that fit those literal criteria in any way. And so unlike what Judge Rutherford taught, that's just not true according to the Scriptures. Let's then consider another doctrine that the Jehovah Witness propagate. Concerning the deity of Jesus, they say this. Uh, Rutherford says, Judge Rutherford said, claimed to be one of the prophets. In truth, when Jesus was on earth, he was a perfect man. Now don't miss this. Nothing more and nothing less. What? Jesus was a perfect man. Nothing more, nothing less. Again, that's pretty clear meaning that all he was, was a good man. Well, friend, let's examine that from the Scriptures. Is that what the Bible actually says? John 1.1 1, 1 says this, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. Don't miss this. And the Word was God. Verse 14 says, We beheld His glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Who are we talking about? Jesus Christ is God. John 20 verse 28, when Thomas saw the nail prints in Jesus' hand, uh, the sword in his side, he said to the Lord, my Lord and my what? My God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1, quoting from the Old Testament, applies the language of you, Lord, when you made the foundations, and he applies that directly to the Son. God was there at creation. John 5, verse 18, John 1, verse 14, multiple places throughout the Bible, we clearly see Jesus was not just a man. Jesus was God in the flesh. We'll call His name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Matthew 1, verses 19 through 24. Now let's consider another doctrine that the Jehovah Witness uh, teach concerning the destruction of the earth. The Jehovah Witness say this, the earth will never be destroyed. You know, I like quotes like that, not because they're true, but because they're so clear. The earth will never be destroyed, according to Jehovah Witness doctrine. Well, friend, you know the Bible's real clear on that subject, isn't it? Let's read for ourselves in Matthew chapter 24, and I want you to listen to what Jesus said. Let's contrast Jehovah Witness doctrine with the doctrine of Christ. Notice Matthew 24, beginning in verse 34. Jesus said, the Lord and Savior said, Assuredly I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. Now listen, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Friend, that's pretty clear too. Jehovah Witness say, the earth will never be destroyed. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass it away. Friend, this is not a matter of a little difference. This is not a matter of interpretation. It's a matter of this. Are you going to believe Jehovah Witness doctrine or are you going to believe Christ? There is no middle ground. It's one or the other. And so we challenge people today to consider these ideas. And there are multiple examples of this that we could go on and on with. We just simply want to illustrate that these doctrines do not add up with what the Bible teaches. Friend, we want to mention again that as we speak about these doctrines, as we say Mormon doctrine says this, or Jehovah Witness, or Baptist doctrine, or Catholic teaching says this, friend, please understand, we know there are good, moral, sincere people inside every one of these religious groups. I know people there. I've got friends there. You probably do as well. My, our, we are not being mean, unkind. We do not think they're bad people. But friend, let's also realize this. Sometimes people listen to the wrong source. And sometimes people get caught up in false teaching. And we say these things today out of love 
and out of kindness because we want our friends and neighbors and anyone who's caught up in this to be saved. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.15, speak the truth in love. Friend, we ask you today, consider if these things are true. Check the references we've given. Check the documentation itself. Then just look in your Bible and see. If their prophets prophesied the Lord would come back in the 18th or 19th or 20th century and it didn't happen, if they say the Lord's going to come back in 1835 and their alleged prophet says that and it didn't happen, what can I logically know based on the litmus test of Deuteronomy 18.22? Prophet prophesies something in my name, God says, and it does not come to pass. That prophet has spoken it presumptuously. God says, don't worry about it. What did God say? When Charles Taze Russell or Judge Rutherford or uh, Ellen G. White, whoever it may be, people today stand up and say, here's one of the things you can know beyond a shadow. Of Somebody stands up and says, I know when the Lord's coming back. Friend, you may as well put a check, by, check mark by their name as a false prophet and a false teacher. Why? Matthew 24, 36. Jesus said, no one, do they claim to know more than what Jesus knew? No one knows the day nor the hour, not even the Son, only the Father in heaven. The Bible clearly says, anytime somebody says they know when I'm coming back, they're lying. Because God says no one knows that day. And so while we say these things passionately, our passion comes from a love for lost souls. And so friend, again, we want to encourage you to study on these things. Here, just study your Bible. Study the Word of God for yourself. We're not saying, hey, you've got to lay our book alongside the Bible to understand. No. Here's what the Bible says. Paul said, when you read, you can understand. Ephesians 3 verse 4. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The Bible says, search the Scriptures, the Word of God daily. Acts chapter 17 verse number 11. And friend, if you have been caught up in some of these doctrines or teachings of denominational groups, we'd love to help you with that. There is so much more evidence that time will not present us to, uh, permit us to present that we would love to share with you. You can write to us. You can call us. You can email us at the information given. We'd be happy to take time to sit down and look at the evidence and then simply let you decide on your own. Friend, we want you to know this again. We love you. God loves you. Our motive is to help men and women go to heaven. May each of us study the Bible for ourselves and see what's true or what's false. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.